the evidence is right there. It's time for PlayStation to basically bury down into its greatest strengths. For the most part, a lot of folk have basically allowed for this company to just do what it wanted to do and basically has gotten to the precipice where its identity is now starting to look unrecognizable. About 10 more live service games are in the pipeline for this company, yet their newest release, a single player game, fun playful title, is now basically the talk of the town. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. As much as you guys will see me hit PlayStation in areas that I know that they're weak, at the end of the day, I still like playing their games. I double dip on their games. I've told some of you PlayStation fans that you don't PlayStation up to me because I will PlayStation on PlayStation and still PlayStation on PC. But lately, I've been seeing that this company has basically been taking what I think are anti-consumer, what I think are unethical moves, and are not bringing value to their community. Somebody put a tweet up just hours ago after we started to see Astrobot basically get the Metacritic scores that, for the most part, a lot of people expected that it would get. And they said something along the lines of, I hope this game, having had a Metacritic score with approximately 100 reviews, will probably wake PlayStation up to realize that this is exactly the direction that they need to be going. Stealth 40K tweet here. I'm going to read it to you guys. Astrobot has settled at a 94 Metacritic average with approximately 100 reviews. Team Asobi made this game with around 60 staff in three years. The smallest Sony first-party studio. Now, I don't know if that's the case, but it could be. I hope this is a lesson PlayStation carries into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, as much as I told you guys that me, I'm not necessarily happy with PlayStation's proposition, I bought God of War Ragnarok. I wasn't happy with the game after playing it, but I do like the God of War franchise. All the Uncharted games I've played, I bought, I bought the Uncharted collection, pre-ordered Uncharted as my first game ever that I pre-ordered, and at the end of the day, to me, a lot of these PlayStation games, they rock. The Spider-Man games, after having got them on the PlayStation platform multiple times, by the way, I double-dipped on PC. The only game I didn't get on PC was The Last of Us Part 1 because it was broken at launch and the port is not good. I've never beaten Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Forbidden West. But you know what? I own those two games. So there's something to be said about PlayStation titles. There is something to be said about their third-person titles. As much as, yes, maybe we may have some issues about them being, you know, third-person walking, dad simulators, all of this talk. There is still that niche that it seems like they just have a huge influence in. Yes, they do face stiff competition from other people, but it is still a thing that they're capable of bringing what I think is the A game to, to the, you know, to the table. And right now, having seen how Concord has basically been pulled away from existence, we can see that a game like Astrobot, which is basically a game that you would probably more than likely attach to a platform like Nintendo is seemingly going to do well. I think the challenge now that this game is going to face is whether or not, you know, users are going to buy this game in the face of other titles that a lot of their user base is attracted to. That is yet to be seen. However, this video is basically pointing towards the nature of the game and the nature of the games that it seems they want to be shifting to. If this information that's actually posted by this Twitter is, you know, this Twitter account is actually accurate, then 60 staff three years is what PlayStation should have been doing with a lot of their studios. Small studios creating tiny little games that resonate based on even some of the bigger franchises, but are offshoots. I remember watching Jaffe one time and he was saying something. He said, if PlayStation could just take a small splice of Uncharted and make like an offshoot game. Do you guys remember they did that? They did that with the Uncharted Lost Legacy. They did that with those two characters, Chloe and uh, the other one. I can't remember if it's Nadine or so. I played that game. I bought that game. I owned that game on PlayStation. The only reason I didn't double dip was because they were selling the texture pack for 10 bucks on PlayStation 5. I was like, man, that's rotten. I'm not going to buy a texture pack from you guys. They call it a PS5 upgrade. Get the heck out of here. The frame rate unlock. That should be given for free for people who bought the PlayStation 5. If not, I'd have bought the, the text, the, uh, you know, the upgrade, or I said the upgrade. I would have bought the game on PC, I guess, if they had upgraded it for free on the PlayStation 5. But they decided they wanted to go greedy, the greedy route so they can basically, you know, sit there and not take any money from anyone or me anyways. Anybody else you want to give me money, that's your choice. So at the end of the day, 
I think we hear, you know, they're the boss. Uh, I can't remember his. I can't remember saying his name off the top of my head. I think with him saying they don't have you know many IPs that they can pull from the ground up, I don't necessarily think, you know, he's considering the amazing power of bringing out these small games that probably will not cost you as much to develop, and still net you what I think is a good, you know, audience reception possibly net you enough money from the you know franchises and from the niche of people that play those games because there are nintendo switch players that own playstation that own playstation 5s that will be very happy to play a game like astrobot i took a look at what wikipedia thinks are playstation ips and i was very surprised yes there's kind of a you know there's some of them that are kind of not necessarily playstation you know ips but there seems to be a lot of them i saw some names that i haven't even seen in a long time I saw Sly Cooper, yes, but I saw Siphon Filter. I remember back in the day, I used to hear a lot about this particular franchise. Interesting that they have games like these, you know? And if you go through and start looking at the franchises that they have that are PlayStation, not what Wikipedia has here, that's all mixed up, you will be very surprised how some of the games people have been asking for for the longest time. Yet, they've only taken a small amount and have actually put it into, you know, the ether. A game like Gravity Rush, I think, could have been expanded like the Nier Automata, Nier Replicant, and Nier franchises. I think Gravity Rush would have really resonated with a lot of the fans who play those kinds of games. Yet, Japan Studio, they closed and they've taken out of its existence. Somebody even commented on one of my videos and said, this serves them right, seeing that they closed about nine different studios and have now decided that they will pursue these live service games and pursue money hiding games because it's a shortcut. That's what it's always been. It's a shortcut to make it seem like they were putting in an effort, but in reality, they were basically going ahead to defer what would have served the PlayStation fans all this while. I'm not certain that this Astro Bot game is going to really change their minds, simply because when you look at the data from a lot of these innovative titles, it's not been too consistent with what the fandom has basically been offering in terms of how they buy the games. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. However, I think they need to make it an investment where they continue to put out these kinds of games to create the taste, create the fan base, and then nurture and foster them so that this fan base is willing to buy these types of games. They're there. It's not an easy fan base to find, but you have to basically appeal to them and create a library for them and create the investment for them. The monies that you're using to basically money hat these games could be used to continue to make more games like these. And I think that's a strategy that can work. I think that's a strategy that can work. If you want to make it a game that has a little bit of some meat on there, some single player meat with an external PvP or, you know, extensive, you know, mode of multiplayer that attaches to it, that's also fine. That's another way to be able to get fans into that ecosystem and build something. It's not going to be overnight. I think a lot of folk think that this is going to be something that's overnight at the PlayStation leadership, but that's not possible. How is it possible that they expect that to happen overnight? So I think, again, that money hatting and greed, because it's easier, it's cheaper, is now coming back to basically be rubbed in their face because their own game is teaching them how to not do their own game that they did just a few days ago that they're now pulling away from the market. Very interesting. And I wish the PlayStation fans were a lot more aggressive, a lot more vocal during the time of Jim Ryan. They just all thought that they were comfortable and that they were somehow winning in quote because they had Square Enix there to be convinced to give them a load of Final Fantasy games. And the Final Fantasy games, y'all are not even playing as much anyways, because apparently the franchises that you would probably resonate with are literally sitting on a Wikipedia page. History being buried of really solid games that PlayStation players have always loved in the past. So, the dice cast. I guess we're going to be looking to see what PlayStation goes ahead to do with this. It's going to be very interesting overall because at the end of the day, I'm of the mind that if they don't take any lessons from this, then they're just asking for a whole world of trouble because their competitors already have this.
Believe it or not, they already have this. Nintendo doesn't need to worry about it. Xbox just needs to continue to grow what it already has in this particular space of small games, tiny franchises all over the place. Stuff that they've called, oh, it's all that indie stuff that's on Game Pass. It's there, though. And if it keeps growing bigger, it's going to keep getting more and more attractive. And PlayStation needs those because it's not going to be doing these $200 million single player games or $300 million single player games so easy. Let's sit there for six, seven, eight years. Very expensive to make. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Oh, yeah. And you know, there's also Bloodborne, right? <laughs> Peace out.